Good morning. When we were in here practicing this morning, the, the band was, I was in here praying with them. And a, as I was praying here um, and they were singing, God gave me a vision. And the vision was this. There was a big field open and I could see an army stepping in. And as they were stepping into place, their shields were locking into the person next to them. So like one would step in and his shield would lock into this one. And then the next one would step in and his shield would lock into the one next to him. And when they were done, they had created a wall that the enemy couldn't get through. And then I told Becky about it, and she said, I want, you to, I want you to tell. And while I was praying about that, what I would say, God gave me a verse. It's Psalms 133, and I've been studying that one for a few weeks. Uh, and I'll read it to you because it, it's pretty powerful if, if you really dig into it. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like a precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to his skirts of his garments. And as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. And this is the part that really gets you. For there, God commanded the blessing. And that's what I call, uh, it's a two and through verse. It leads you to a book of Acts when they were all in one room and all in one accord. And that's when the Holy Spirit fell. And then it leads it on through into your life now. Where as a congregation, we can come together. And the problems that we're facing, we can link together and show the enemy that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not a divided front. This is a united people. And when he comes against my family, he's coming against your family. When he tries to attack you, he's attacking me. So today's the day to, to join together. Unity, come forward together and stand next to your brothers. So what's awesome is that at 7 o'clock this morning, when I'm in my room playing, that's the exact same vision. Did I not? Is that not exactly the same thing I told them? I walk off the stage. I tell my praise and worship team. I said, listen, the Lord gave me this vision while I was practicing of like a riot, that there's a riot going on. And you know how sometimes the, the, the townspeople will, will get them a fire truck and they'll spray the police, but they've got those shields. Those big plastic shields. And, they, and for a moment, they've pushed them back. But those police come together and they lock those shields, like he's saying. And they get side by side. And I know you've seen this on the TV. And they start taking ground back. Today, the Lord says, you're going to take ground back. See, today, the Lord told me to tell you, and it, it didn't even make sense, but then Will said that. He said, if you don't have something to fight for yourself, then you join and you lock your shield with somebody else and you join and fight for them. Like Will said, if you attack my family or your family, we're standing with you. So maybe you've got rest on all sides and maybe you don't. But Tanya needs you to lock your shield with her. Her and Michael. Michael's facing cancer. People's families. We all need somebody to lock and you don't even know by your obedience today what you will accomplish in the kingdom of God. So we're going to watch this video and then we're going to go right into I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Do you hear me? Go ahead and put that on Chris. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, Paul says, take a stand, withstand, and then stand in the evil day. And believe me, the battle for your soul begins in your mind. If Satan can control your thoughts, he'll control your destiny. Because I assure you, when Satan sees you walking down the road like this, he will totally destroy you. You can't possibly survive in your own strength. Why are so many Christians decimated right now? Why are they just absolutely falling out because they don't have the strength to endure? The Bible says, be strong in the Lord. Say that with me. Be strong in the Lord. That means put on this whole armor. Without faith, it is impossible to please. 
Praise God. You can get nothing from heaven without faith. Salvation comes by faith. Healing comes by faith. Peace, love, and joy come by faith. You are no match for the Prince of Darkness. But when you put on the whole armor of God, you are more than a conqueror. You can look the devil in the eye and say, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Get out of my life. Get out of my thoughts. Get out of my marriage. Get out of my home. Get away from my children. Get away from my health, the power, and the anointing of God are with me. And I am the conqueror here. Resist steadfast in the faith. The translation is fight him and fight him every day. Resist him and resist him every day. James writes, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Take a stand means you refuse to be intimidated by Satan who comes as a roaring lion according to 1 Peter 5. In nothing, be not terrified by your adversary. In nothing, be not terrified by your adversary. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. The truth is not something. The truth is someone. That someone is Jesus Christ. And when you know him, you have the truth. And you walk in the truth. And you join the truth. And you rejoice with truth that is unspeakable and unshakable. Because Christ is the solid rock, the cornerstone, precious and elect in Zion. He's not trying to be true. He is the truth. I want to put on the whole armor of God and come out fighting with fresh fire that I can be counted worthy to be numbered among the New Testament saints. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we put on that full armor, God, right now to stand. Father God, to stand. And I pray, Father God, everybody lift your hands. Lord, we take back ground. If we're not taking back ground for ourselves, we're going to take back ground for somebody else. We're singing hallelujah in the presence of our enemies, in the presence of our circumstances. We still sing to you. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Come on. In the name of Jesus, everybody said?
Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, before me in the presence of my enemies. The Lord wants to, he says to me, there's some of my people today, they've forgot who's at the table with them. They are too concentrated on the enemies around the table. It is time for some of you to be reintroduced who's sitting at the table with you. Because once our fig, when was we fixated on who's at the table, it doesn't matter what's going on around us. Because fear won't have us. The enemy's plan won't have us. What happens is we are so fixated on the only one that can change our situation that everything else seems to fail. That it's time that some of you are reintroduced. You've let fear and there's a breach in your wall. And you feel you can't go on. God says, fix your focus. Fix your focus upon the one who's at the table with you. 
and let your situation diminish in the presence of your enemies because who sits at the table with you? to pray and the Holy Spirit spoke to me spoke to Sam Sam started first about the battle that it, the, the battle that we're in but he said the, what I heard the Spirit say was let us be aware of the invisible forces that are among us that have come to fight against us the weapons that the enemy roars about like a walks about like a roaring lion he prowls about to destroy and there is a battle that is set against your soul he says he has come to destroy you we just go along life just like everything's hunky-dory. But the whole time there is a plan of the enemy to set out to trip you up, to bring you in. You know, he, he wants to pull you away from him and from his presence, from his plan and his purpose that he has for you. God has such a plan for your life. And this surrendering to him and saying, no more, not today. You cannot have my emotions. You cannot have my mind today. And fight, fight for what he's got put in your life, what his plans are for you. Join our shields. I'm gonna sing. Come on, sing this to your, for your neighbor. Middle of the Come on, across the aisleways, hold hands. Louder and louder. Come on, declare those ashes. Hear my praises roll. Up from the ashes. Up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Cause I'm gonna sing. In the middle of the storm. Come on, pray over your neighbor. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roll. Walk from the ashes. Hope it'll arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Father God, right now we pray for the person next to us. Father God. Oh, Father God, we pray. That from up from the ashes, hope will arise. Father God, there's any place in their life that they don't have any hope, Father God. Father God, 
in the name of Jesus, up from the ashes, hope will rise today in Jesus' name. Because death is defeated. Everything that comes against us is defeated. In the name of Jesus. Sing it one more time. Sing it for your neighbor. Because I'm going to sing. In the middle of the storm, we sing beside you louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. You're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. The King is alive. Take and drop hands.
is of a thousand generations. You are worthy, Lord of all. And to you, the slain and risen King, we lift our voice with heaven, singing worthy, Lord. before us to our home. Knowing that he's everything that you need. Everything that you've ever needed. That's what he kept telling me this morning. Becky, I am everything that you need. I was everything you've always needed and I'm everything that you need now. And when you sing from that perspective that he is worthy, you just want to worship him because he's all that you need. We're going to sing those woes. And you sing from that perspective that he's everything that you need, everything that you've ever needed, everything that you will need. That's who you are singing to. You are singing to the King of kings and the Lord of lords that sits upon the throne who your life is in his hands. Sing that to that king. Sing to him. Whoa. Come on, you guys too. Whoa. You are worthy, yeah. oh, 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 yes, we all we need. You are worthy, yeah. oh, 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 oh,
your hands. And I exalt Oh, come on. You guys sing it. Come on. I exalt thee. Come on, bow before your king. And I exalt thee. Yes. Come on, you guys. So what we've been saying for the last little bit, the last 35, 40 minutes is, God, you're worthy of it all. You're, you're saying, we're making a declaration of God that you're worthy of everything. And if you're sitting back in your seat and I, you're saying, I just can't say that. I don't, 
No, why are people raising their hands? Why are people hugging each other and praying for people? Why are people excited when they talk about the joy of the Lord? Why? I don't understand. So I have to ask you the question that you're asking yourself. Is Jesus Lord of your life? The Bible says this. Jesus gave two commandments in the Bible. He gave two commandments. Moses gave ten from God, but Jesus gave two. And he said the first, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Come on, help me. With all your soul and all your mind. And if you really love someone, I love my wife. And when I see her, I want to show her I love her. I'm going to say, I love you, babe. I said, babe, I love you. Y'all getting it so far? If he's the love, if he's Lord, then he's the love of your life. Can I get an amen? And if your heart's not beating towards Jesus, he's not the love of your life. So I'm going to give you an opportunity today to make him Lord and Savior and the love of your life. So if that's just you right now, stick your hand up. I need to rededicate my life to Christ, wherever you're at. So I need to, where I'm at, I need to rededicate my life to Jesus Christ right now. Yeah, right, everybody looking around and saying, you know what, I'm going to stick my hand up. I'm going to rededicate my life to Jesus. Now, I love Jesus, but I want to love him more than I ever loved him before. Amen. I want it to be sweeter and sweeter as the days go on. Amen. So you got your hands up. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe in the virgin birth? If you do, say yes. Do you believe that he is the son of God? Do you believe he died for your sins and three days later he rose again? I love this part. And soon and very soon, do you believe he's coming back again? Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name. Now, if you got your hand up, you see someone with their hand up, go give them a hug right now. Go get, or where you're at, go give them a hug right now. Wherever they're at, go give them a hug right now. Come on, get out there and start hugging them. Start loving them. Sing it to them. Hey. You are worthy of it all. right now. Say, I will praise you all my life. Say it with me. Lord, we will praise you all of our life. We will worship at your feet all of our life because you are worthy of it all. 
Yes, you are. You are worthy of it all. Come yes, on, tell him, people. Come on. You are worthy of it all. Yes, God. Yes, come on, tell him. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. More time. Because you are worthy. Oh, you are blessing his heart right now. You are worthy of it all. the glory you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things to you are all things you deserve the glory for from you are all things, and to you are all things. It's all you. From you are all things, and to you are all things. From you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Amen. So thank you, Jesus. Say it like you mean it. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of it all. Every circumstance, every situation we ever had to go through, Lord. God, we thank you that you were right there with us, holding us up this whole time, God. You never left us. You never left us all by yourself, God. You were right there. And Lord, we thank you that you have a plan for us, and it's good and not an evil. And we speak that over this congregation. A blessing upon all the kids that go back to class today, Lord. Thank you for the ones that, that today raise their hand and say, I surrender my life to you, Jesus. We pray a blessing upon them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray and all God's people said, amen, amen. Hug someone when you go back to your seat. If you made a decision the first time or rededicated your life to Christ, go back where Aaron and Kimmy are back and we'll let you fill out a, a card where we can help disciple you and get you along your way. And we're excited what God is doing. Can I get a big amen? Uh, so that's not a big amen. We'll try it again. Can I get a big amen? Amen. amen. You say, why do you want us to say amen? Amen, you agree. I don't want you to agree with me, but I want you to agree with the Word of God. Um, a few things. Today, right after church, we are going to have um, the baptism. Excited about that. So if you're getting baptized. And you know what? I want to do something kind of crazy. Is that all right with you all? I mean, this, this is a little bit out, out of the box, all right? Everybody's like, oh, my goodness, what's he going to do, all right? I'm not doing jumping jacks. Um, if you just gave your heart to Christ and you want to get baptized, we got close. Come on. Do it right now. Why not? Amen? Amen. I, had a, I had a man that I was talking to gave his heart to Christ up in Austin. He sat back in his seat. They had the water was ready. And my, my buddy, Pastor Jacob, says, I think you need to get uh, since you gave your heart to Christ, I think you need to go ahead and get baptized. He said, man, I'm just trying to take all this in right now. And then all of a sudden, he said, the Lord told him, first time he heard God's voice, he said, get up and get baptized. He jumped right in the pool, man, and, gave, and surrendered his life to Christ after he gave his heart to Christ. So you know what? If you want to do that today, the water is ready, nice and warm. We'd love to be part of that. Amen. Um, so today we're doing our second series of spiritual warfare. Let, next week we are going to... Um, start that up, finish it, finish it up, it'll be our third series. Um, and also, too, I just want to give over here to my young people. Let's give him a hand clap. Can we do that? <laughs> encounter is going to be, when's Encounter, Alexis? W September 29th? All right, I, I guess I wasn't watching the news. I'm sorry. All right, September 29th is going to be Encounter. I'm going to do something I haven't really done. I'm going to push for every adult to come, and we're going to help out. All right, whatever we got to do, we're going to help out. Whatever Damon and Sam and and the young adults need and the youth need, we're going to help them out. You guys do that with me? All right? Okay, okay. wow, there's two of us. Thank you. Me and Will got it. All right, don't worry. You guys stay home, all right? All right. We're going to try this again. Will you all kind of help us out, do security, whatever you can do? Can you do that for me? All right, all right. We're investing into the generation. I tell you what, I don't have a, I don't have a lot of money, but what I do have is a lot of, I, I don't have a lot of time either. I say I have a lot of time. I don't have that either. 
But the time that I have, I want to invest in the kingdom of God. Amen? Because there's going to be a generation after me. And I want to be sure that we do everything we can to that generation to be ready and to go. My dad was so blessed. They had blessed me so much that as I took over as pastoring Turning Point Church, which I did not know I was going to be doing that. And, um, but he said, he told all his friends around, he says, one of these days my boy's going to come back from Maine and he's going to pastor this church. And, and one of these days it's going to happen. He's going to, he's going to pastor here. And he got everything in position for all these changes could be happening. We had enough money and you, the, the church was strong and in a good position. We could just keep moving forward. So I, as I say that, let's just give the Lord a hand clap for what he's done for almost a year. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I'll tell you what, it's been awesome. So last week we talked on um, the it was spiritual warfare. We talked about the three areas of your life that <clears throat> the enemy will try to attack. Three areas in your life. And the first area was, was health and family, and third was finances. And we asked the question, because in Luke chapter 10, that we found out that Jesus says that, here in a little bit we'll find out, that we have power over, dominion over anything. And we said, if you're going through a spiritual attack, how do you know it's a, a, a spiritual warfare, or how do you know if it's trials? The Bible tells us in the book of James, we heard earlier today on the announcements um, before worship, that the Bible tells us that count it all joy that we go through trials. If you haven't been through a trial in a while, it is tough. Some are trials and some is warfare. And you need to decide what is what. Because not everything is a devil, amen? Oh my, I tell you, it's going to be a tough one today. All right, I'm swinging again. Not everything is the devil. Can I get amen? amen. You, everybody thinks, well, the devil made me do it. Okay, that worked when you were three, Okay. All right, when you're 35, it doesn't work, all right? Sometimes the devil will make you do things you shouldn't have done, but you had the choice to do it. Can I say amen? amen. Our, our consequences, we have consequences for our actions. And, and so I'm, what I'm trying to tell you, sometimes you're just going through a trial, or sometimes you're going through a spiritual warfare. And if you go through a spiritual warfare, a lot of times we've allowed the enemy to be in our camp. We used to sing the song, I went to the enemy's camp. Y'all remember that song? Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. All right, y'all. Oh, my, here we go. All right, and he took back. <laughs> don't get me going, Will. All right, and I took back what he what? And he took back what he? Oh, and I took back what he stole from me. Well, I went to the enemy's camp. Come on. And I took back what he stole from me. My favorite part. He's under my feet. Well, he's under my feet. He's under my feet, well, he's under my feet. He's under my feet, well, he's under my feet. What is it? Satan is under. Woo, got to get my breath. I was like skinny right singing that song, all right? See, he's under your feet. You have dominion and you have power over the enemy. Can I get an amen? amen. See, we look, at, we look at Satan and we look at him and think he's all powerful, but the spirit of God that lives inside of you is stronger than any plan of the enemy. Yeah. And we have to start looking at God as like he's weak. God is strong and powerful, and so are you if you live for him. And we have to make that choice today. And so today my series, second series today on spiritual warfare is that you are more than a conqueror. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm more than a conqueror. All right, say the other side. Say you're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. You're going to go through things in your life, but you're more than that. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. It says, yet in all these things, we know that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Does Jesus love you today? Yes. Oh, we're getting it. If Jesus loves you today, and we know he does because Jesus loves me, this I know. And I promise you, I'm not going to go there, all right, for the Bible tells me so, all right? But we know Jesus loves you. And we know that if you know he loves you, then he know that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And we should not be in the situation in 2019 that our counties and our southern Indiana and Kentuckyana looks this way. Our nation shouldn't look this way. If we're more than conquerors through Christ... And we believe the Spirit of God lives inside of us. 
that we should be affecting the world. The world shouldn't be affecting us. Amen? You know, we're not supposed to be the world, man. You know, you, you, people get so crazy on that. I mean, you get people get saved and they're like, I can't, don't worry, Pastor, I quit talking to all my friends around Jesus. I'm like, that's not what I said, all right? You're supposed to go out and go to the world, to all of the world and make disciples, right? Amen? And so you need to go out there and don't say, hey, I can't can't hang around you anymore because I got this Jesus in my life. Okay, that will not win them to Jesus, all right? You're like, your Jesus is better than them, all right? We don't need that, all right? That's not going to help you. You have to love them. But we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 10, verses 19, you don't have to turn there, but it said this, that Jesus said he gave an authority over the enemy so they could walk over snakes and over scorpions and crush them and nothing will injure you. Nothing will injure you. If you find yourself today under attack, you feel like you've been under attack for a while and you, you don't understand why you're under attack and what does attack look like, all right? Maybe you've been under attack like this. Maybe you have been financial attack or maybe you've been in a health attack or maybe you, you have had some family issues. I'll tell you what, I want to forget to tell you this. The Lord showed me this this, this, after, this morning was this, that you understand why he attacks your family. Because the enemy understands that the first ministry that God has given you is your family. If we fail in our family, we'll fail everywhere else. Can I get an amen? amen. That's tough, man. You're like, what? You know, I see pastors that want to go out and send thousands of people to Christ, but they can't even lead their own children to Jesus. You know, we, we have to be the ones to go out there and be with our children, love on our children, give our children the word we need to hear all the time is grace. How many give our kids grace? I was, on my, I was on Victoria the other day, and I felt the Lord just say, I'm sorry, Victoria, you're in here. I didn't, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was on Victoria the other day, and I felt, my, I felt the Lord say, give her grace. She's just a kid. And I was like, Lord, forgive me. I went to her, I said, Victoria, I'm so sorry. She says, Oh, it's not a big deal, Dad. No, no big deal. And I'm like, thank you for being so compassionate. So it's your dad who's an idiot right now, all right? <laughs> I need some grace. we got to give our children some grace. More than conquerors through Christ. And you ever wonder when you're under attack, when all these attacks come on, maybe the enemy, and not maybe he does, the enemy sees something in you that you don't see in yourself. See, he sees how powerful you could be. But, it, but if you saw yourself who you are in Christ, see, Sam is doing a series over the young adults on identity. And our identity is not in our job. Our identity is not in our marriage. Our identity is not in the house we, house we live or in the car we drive. Our identity is in Christ. Amen. See, if you know what he's done for you, and you know what Jesus did for your life, and he knows what he's called you in your word, that no matter what thing comes at you, what people said about you when you were a child, or they say about you when you're an adult, you know who you are in Christ, and you're confident with that. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm confident in Christ. See, I'm confident in who I am in Christ, not in my own ability. It's not by me. It's not by my ways. It's not by who, what I can do. It's not by my education. It's by him and him alone. You see, they now, if you guys know, I'm a, I love sports. I haven't got to watch it in a while, but, you know, <laughs> because I've got a baby on the way. So, you know, maybe I get to watch it in like 20 years, you know. But anyway, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> sad but true. All right. But everybody knows I love, I love basketball. You know, I love all sports, but I love basketball too. And, and you know, if we know in 1990, and you know, Frank's going to know what I'm talking about. Frank Riley is a great ball player. And we're going to get him this year, hopefully, Damon, on our basketball team. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> but in 1990, there was, a, there was an awesome guy that came out of Bedford, North Lawrence. And his name was, anybody know it? Da oh, everybody knows it. It's like Damon Bailey and Bobby Knight. You know, I went to Maine. It was like, are you from the place of Bobby Knight? I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> Those, but Damon Bailey scored more points than anybody in the state of Indiana. He scored 1,134, I believe. Now, when Damon Bailey was in eighth grade, this is crazy to me. I mean, just crazy. I told this to my wife, and she's like, wow. In eighth grade, he was recruited by Coach Bobby Knight. Could you imagine going to a middle school game, and there's Bobby Knight, 
and you already have a full ride to play D1 basketball for Indiana University. And this was back in the day, young kids, when Indiana was still good. All right, just, all right, just check it, all right? <laughs> they actually won games back in those days, all right? In case you're like, that's not a big deal. I could have played there. Come on. <laughs> all right, just kidding, all you fans, all right? <laughs> I'm a Kentucky fan, say amen on that. I'm <laughs> uh, just kidding. All right, let's get y'all. But see, Damon, but, but see, Damon, Coach Knight saw potential in Damon Bailey. And he went after him at a young age. The enemy's been going after you and after you and after you and after you for a long time because he sees your potential. Come on, give me an amen. It's your chance. Amen. And you're like, oh, why, why, why am I going through all this? Why, why do I keep going through all this? Why do I keep feeling defeated? Why do I keep going through all these attacks? Because he sees potential in who you are. See, the demons even understood the power of Jesus. But as Christians, a lot of times, we don't. We're going to go to that here in a second. Check, check them, uh, Mark chapter 5. And if you're a Mark 5, and you can use the screen if you want, we're going to NLT version. Now, we know right now that Jesus had just rolled across, they just rolled across the lake. Now, remember, this is, this is the same story, um, and it was in Mark 4, we say on Mark 5, though. In Mark 4, when they rolled across the lake, and they thought they were going to drown. Is everybody with me so far? All right. I wanted, the reason why I wanted to show you, I don't want to be halfway in the movie, all right? I don't want us to be halfway there, all right? We're going to start from the very beginning. So in Mark, in Mark chapter 4, they just thought they were going to drown to death. And Jesus gets up and he rebukes the storm and he calms the storms. So they're all like, whoa, this Jesus, man. All right, that's our Jesus today, church. He will calm your storms in Jesus' name. Whatever storm is going your way, whatever problem you are facing, whatever it could be, financial or marriage or whatever, or a family, Jesus will calm it. And all he has to say is be still. But you have to believe that. So they get across, they thought they were going to drown to death, all right? They're like on the other side in Mark chapter 5. And they're, the storms have already been raging. They thought they were going to die. He gets the storms quiet. And then all of a sudden, they're in Mark 5, they get on the shore. This is what it says. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by evil spirits came out from a cemetery to meet him. That's the kind of welcome that I want, all right? Next time I go to Hardy Lake, I hope it happens to me. All right, I'm just kidding, all right? <laughs> I'm like, what? All right, next time we go, Johnny, we're hoping to get greeted by somebody in the cemetery. All right, he, he, so what is, why are you saying, why is it so important? The enemy will use, the first thing he'll always try to use in your life is fear. Write that down on your bulletin right now. Put it in your phone if you need to. Fear is what the enemy will always use. He'll use these words called the what ifs. What if this guy's going to attack me? What if this person is crazy? And the disciples are like, man, we just about drowned. And, and now we got a dude that is covered in chains, got his arms all cut up, and he's coming at us. I want to tell you what, walking with Jesus is not boring. Amen? Amen. But you, when you're walking with Jesus and you, are, and you have a relationship with him and you talk to him every day and you're in this word and you're praying to him, I'll tell you what, it's exciting. Amen? I love walking with the Lord. I just love when the Lord just says, do this. And it's like... That does not make any sense at all, but here we go. You just do what my wife's laughing. It's usually part of that. All right. I'm like, hey, we're going to do this. The Lord says. She says, are you sure it's the Lord? <laughs> you just do what he told you to do. You know, when you're doing what God's called you to do, your life is exciting. Because you're walking in the fulfillment of what God has for your life. When you wake up every morning, you think to yourself, I have an opportunity. Look at your neighbor and say opportunity. Thank you, girls. <laughs> Just kidding. Opportunity. He's given you an opportunity to, be, to share the light of Jesus Christ. See, your day, you wake up and you say, oh, I got to go to work. I got to put up with that loud boss and those coworkers. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and they got smelly breath. Oh, I don't know. All right. Whatever it could be. All right. And, and I got to be there all day and I got to hear them complain and I got to hear them put down my cheese. But that to me is an opportunity. See, if we change our perspective and not think this is what I have to do, this is what I get to do. Come on. I hear you. Thank you, Owen. I get to do. I get to go to work. I remember for five months I didn't have a job. 
because the plant I worked for closed down. And every job they offered me was not that great, all right? And I was waiting on this one job, and finally the job opened up. So when I got to the job, I reminded myself every morning when I was going to work, I get to go to work. I have an opportunity to make a paycheck and to unpack the kingdom of God. See, when you have the mindset of kingdom mindset, and what is kingdom mindset? We talked about this in prayer earlier. Kingdom mindset is I'm doing what the kingdom of God, I'm building the kingdom of God, then you can't be offended and you can't be discouraged. So you're like, well, you know what? I'm just doing what God called me to do. And you might have a disappointment in your life, but this is what God wants and this is what's going to happen and I'm going to go with it. Amen. So they, they climb out of the boat, and here's this crazy looking dude, man. I mean, he's, he's and, and the enemy said he used fear first. And remind yourself, it tells us this in Romans 8.31, I don't have it there, but you remind us today, when the enemy comes at you with fear, you remind yourself this, if God is for us, then who can be against us? You remind yourself in 1 John 4, 4, if we remind us that greater is he that is in me than he that lives in the world. So if you remind yourself that the word of God, God is for me, and even all this fear coming against me, and it looks impossible, God will make a way. Amen. I'm going through attack. I'm going through all these things. But it doesn't matter. God is for me. He loves me. And I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. See, when the fear tactics start to happen on your finances or on your health or on your family, you remind yourself that God is bigger than all of this. See, when the enemy wants to use what he can to tax spiritual warfare to defeat you, discourage you to go back to your old ways. But Jesus said this in, in John chapter 3. He said, you should have life and have it what? You know, when you're witness to people and you're trying to tell them about Jesus, just ask them that question. Is life more abundantly? Was this the life that you really wanted to live? Are you living the life that you feel as a child you wanted to live? And 99% say, no, it's not. Because if you're not walking in the will of God, you're not going to walk in the most abundant life. You're not going to walk in the most blessed life. And they said that the guy was hanging out in burial grounds, and he was breaking change. And he was tormented by for evil spirits for years and years and years. This is not the kind of guy you want to invite to a picnic. All right? I mean, this guy was outcast. He was out there all by himself, doing his own thing, cutting himself and, and breaking chains. And he was not living the life that Jesus called him to live. See, Jesus saw this one man. He saw the one man. He heard the Christ. I'm sure because he was on the other side of the lake, I'm sure he could hear him cry out when he cut himself. I heard, I'm sure he could hear himself in agony as he was distressed and didn't want to be this way. He didn't want to live his life this way. There's some people in this own county that I used to see when I used to live on the parsonage. And when they would come through here, and as soon as they hit our parking lot, man, they would start convulsion and all kinds of crazy stuff. And as soon as they got to CVS or to Chase Bank, it stopped because what was going on in their battle. See, this man ran towards Jesus. And when he ran towards him, he, he bowed before him. And this is what he said. Look at verse 7. He says, with a what? With a shriek. He what? Why are you interfering with me, Jesus? Now, look at what. Now look, this is the evil spirit that's speaking through this man. He says this. Now, understand this. Son of the Most High. And the Son of the Most High. In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus already said to the spirit, come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, because there are many of us inside this man. And then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. The New King James Version says to some region. See, now, if he was begging, if he was begging him not to, to send him out, I don't think we're getting this yet. If the evil spirit legions, many, were begging him to stay in the body, then something was telling me that Jesus was more powerful, come on, than evil spirits. 
we, we, don't, we don't get, see, he understood when he saw him, he understood the power that Jesus has. Breaking news, all right, this is not TPC news, but this is breaking news. You have the same power that was given to us, amen? He says you have on heaven and in earth. What can happen in heaven shall happen in earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the same spirit that lives inside of Jesus lives inside of you. Give the Lord a hand clap for that right now. Now, man, I, don't, I know you say that every week. But see, even the evil spirits understood the power of Jesus. Do you really understand the power that you have inside of you? That you can change your family by beginning praying. You can change your community and your workplace when you begin to pray and fast and seek the face of God. You can change your high school and middle school when you begin to pray and fast and seek the face of God. Is it about to get hold of it? You can change your workplace. You can change your neighborhood. You can change the, your whole community by the power of the name of Jesus. It's up to us. He's given us the ball, and he says, take it and go. But a lot of us take it, and we stay. Uh, you know, you say, well, I've been attacked, and I've been, I've been going through this, and I've been going through that, and I've been going through all these, this warfare. I'm, just, I'm tired of fighting. God says, get up and fight some more, because I'm fighting with you. And so the demons understood his power. And he said in this distant place, I want to talk about this for a second. He said uh, he sent it to a distant place or a distant region. Do you understand that there are certain demonic places that the, the demons are, are assigned to? Just like angels are assigned to protection over us, there are demons that are assigned to different areas, even in this old county. Y'all are like, oh my goodness. Yes, that is true. And that really happens. Territorial spirits. You understand when rioting went on? We saw rioting for a couple of years ago. It went on really strong in the, North, in the Midwest. I guarantee you there was a lot of demonic activity going on right there. When, when, you, when you go into a home and there's fighting and bickering and bickering and bickering and bickering and fighting and drug use going on, I'm, I'm telling you, you've opened up some evil spirits. Amen. But you know, we understand today, you're like, oh my goodness, he's talking about demons and this. But if you have Jesus living in your life, you can't be possessed. Amen? Because Jesus lives, but you can't be oppressed. I remember years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine, and she got back from her uh, mission trip from Romania. And, uh, and she was saying just some crazy stuff. I was like, my goodness, you know, what is going on, girl? And the next day, I said, hey, you know, you said this and said this and said this. And she said, I don't even remember any of that. Because she was so oppressed by the enemy. The enemy wants to oppress you. He wants to get your mind to feel like you just did this, that. You can't get on. But you will go on in Jesus' name. Amen? And, you, and a lot of times you have to say, I'm going to be victorious through Christ Jesus. You start declaring it before you even see it. Even when attacks are coming. So they understood the power. The demons understood the power. And they begged to send. They begged Jesus to send the, the spirits into about 2,000 pigs. Now look at verse 13. This is so powerful. Read this with me. The first, uh, first five words. So Jesus gave them what? He gave them permission because he was in control. He's still in control. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the entire herd of 2,000 Pigs plunged down to the steep hillside and to the lake and drowned in the water. And you say, why did he use pigs? Why did Jesus use pigs? In the, G in the first point is this, that Jesus, in the Jewish culture, uh, pigs were considered unclean. And so maybe yes, there were sheep, there were rams, there was goats, but he probably ended up using Pigs, because pigs were considered unclean to the Jewish culture. Culture And number two shows that he had power and dominion over everything. Now look at verse 14. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what has happened. You know, when Jesus moves 
in your life, it is powerful. Amen? And you, I mean, my, I always ask people the question is this. You know, if, if Christ really moved in your life and he's really Lord of your life, then you, the people around should see the difference. There was a, a man who goes to church here. He's not here today, but he uh, works a part-time job as a pizza company. And he's been coming here about, about a month now or six weeks or whatever. And, uh, and he was telling me the other day, he says, you know, he said, I used to hate closing at this pizza company. And I was at the, I was at the close uh, at night, and I hated it. I was all by myself. I was down, down there by myself, and I'd complain, and I'd be negative. And he said, the, the Holy Spirit really spoke to me and says, why are you complaining? You shouldn't be complaining. You should be glad to have a job. You should not complain. You're going to ruin your witness. And so the other day they came to him and they says, all right, you're going to have to close today. He says, okay, that'd be great. And they said, whoa, 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 where's the complaining? Where's the nagging? Where's the, it's not fair. And he says, well, I started going back to a church and, and I really feel that this will ruin my witness. And so I'm not going to complain anymore. And that, the guy said, I like this Jim. <laughs> or I should have said the same. I like this person, you know. <laughs> Whatever his name was, all right? I like this person. <laughs> and, you know, and I am glad that this person. But you know what? They saw a difference. You see, when Jesus moved on this countryside, on the lake where it was really steep, they saw the power of Jesus. You know, and when we, you should understand the power of Jesus that lives inside of you. I know I keep saying it over and over again, but I feel like we don't understand it. We, we, we see it but we don't understand it, or we might even doubt it. But God can do anything. Jesus can do anything. And he said this in that verse 15. And so the crowds were, the crowds were, in verse 15, I'm sorry, I forgot to read that real quick. This is one of my favorite scriptures of the whole story. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane. And they all were afraid. They were afraid of him before because he was breaking chains. And now they're like, what just happened here? What? This guy cast out the demons. This guy that was the outcast, the one that no one wanted to bring to the barbecue, the one that no one wanted to hang out with. This, this Jesus cast these demons. And now this man is dressed and he's in his right mind, and he's perfectly sane. You know, when, when he was going through tormenting and cutting himself and, and running around crazy, there's a lot of us today that feel the same way. I'm not saying you're living in burial ground. I'm not saying you're cutting yourself. I'm not saying you're breaking chains. But what I am saying today is you've been tormented and tormented and tormented, and today Jesus wants to make you whole. See, it's no reason you keep going through these attacks. There's no reason for you to keep, to keep feeling this way. You get, you get five steps forward and you go seven steps backwards. Today, Jesus wants to do something in your life. He wants to make you whole. You might not be as bad off as this man, but you're still tormented. And you're still not walking in your destiny. So you understand the power and you know there's an attack, but you understand what he can do, what Jesus can do. And the crowds didn't understand Jesus. And they were, they were all around him, and they didn't understand him. So what they asked him to do, they asked him to leave. There's churches all over this country that will understand the presence of Almighty God. And because they don't understand the presence of Almighty God, they wanted to leave. They wanted to be on a time frame. They want to do this, 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 and be out and get your time in and get the time out. But what we're asking today is that we should ask him to leave. We should ask him to stay. Hey, Jesus, stay as long as you want. Who's going to say, I don't understand God's ways? The Bible says in Isaiah 55, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And, and they wanted him to go because they couldn't understand him. That The man was in his right mind. They could not see a man that was restored. All they could think about were pigs that were, were drowned. In verse 18, so Jesus did what they asked. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. And verse 19, this is so powerful. Look at this. But Jesus said, no, go where? And where does he go next to home? To your family. And tell them 
everything the Lord has done for you and, show, and everything for you and how merciful he has been. Let me read that again. So go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. What was he saying? You need to go out and tell your testimony. You lived on this lake for all your life. People knowing you as a crazy man. People knowing you as someone they couldn't touch. And now they're going to see you and you're going to impact more people than I could affect. Because you need to go out and tell your testimony. Someone say testimony. Your testimony is powerful. And if you mess your testimony up, it's okay to go back and ask for forgiveness. Amen? If somebody we think, well, I, I, I messed up. I said things I shouldn't have said. You go back and say, I'm sorry for saying that, Lord. Uh, you tell those people, I'm sorry for saying what I should have said. Even if they're in the wrong, you still say you're sorry. Can I get an amen on that? That's tough. That takes a real man. That's the biggest man and the, and the toughest person I can know. I could go and say, you know what? I'm sorry that I upset you. They asked Jesus to go because they could not understand who he was. Becky, can you come on up? We're going to sing this song in a second. We understand that Ephesians 6 tells us we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but principalities of darkness. Spiritual warfare happens, but you are more than a conqueror. You will overcome in the name of Jesus. The things you have been attacked and have been attacked, your family's been attacked, your, your finances have been attacked, in the name of Jesus, God will be there. He's fighting for you, not against you. Remember that we will be authority. We have the authority in the name of Jesus. Everybody say authority. Authority is a word we don't hear enough. When, when, when they go into the military and they know the ranks of the military, when they walk into to there, they know who has the authority and doesn't have the authority. I'm telling you, they... You have the authority through what Christ did on the cross 2,000 years ago. You have the authority right now in the name of Jesus to break every stronghold over your family's life. You have the authority in the name of Jesus to have your children start walking in the ways of the Lord. You have the authority through the name of Jesus as your finances will be straightened back up in the name of Jesus. But with that authority comes the word we don't hear a lot about. It's the word repenting. If the enemy has been in your camp, there's some things you need to repent and then take authority in Jesus' mighty name. Can you stand up with me today? I'm telling you, we need to see some people totally sold out to Jesus. And when you're going through attack and you feel like you're going through a warfare, you feel like all these things, you remind yourself that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And he's going to do it again. Jesus is going to do it again. So we're going to sing this song. And there's something you've been facing, whatever's been going on. Ask people getting baptized. If you want to go to the back and go ahead and start changing your clothes, you can. And uh, but something you've been facing, something you've been going through, he's going to do it again. Amen? Go ahead, Becky.